Hey, what's up, Unbroken Nation? Hope that you're doing well wherever you are in the world today. Super excited to be back with you in another episode with my great friend, Jeff Wickersham. Jeff, my man, how are you? What is going on in your world today? I am doing fantastic, Michael. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm pumped up, excited, ready to get into this, uh, this conversation today. Yeah, me too, man. And Jeff, what I love about you, brother, is you always bring the energy. So this will be really great, especially for Unbroken Nation. If you're at the gym, if you're getting your day started, this is going to be a good one. Jeff, before we dive in, though, can you create a little context? Tell the audience a little bit about yourself and how you got to where you are today. Yeah, absolutely. And and really, it, the, the story starts about eight years ago when, unfortunately, I had that life event that kind of changed everything, right? I, I lost my mom to breast cancer. And when you lose the woman that brought you into this world, see her take her last breath, it, it fundamentally changes you at your core. So at that time, I questioned everything, right? Was corporate America, I was in the corporate space at that time, having me, was, was corporate America having me bound out of bed on fire in the morning? And the answer came back resoundingly, no. So I went, opened up a gym locally, and then what organically grew out of that was high performance coaching and, and how we set up our days for success. What are the, the, what are the bookends of your day look like? That last 30 minutes? How do you prepare for success in the morning? And then what do those first 30 minutes look like? So I went down that journey, wrote a book, host a podcast, just eat, sleep, and breathe it on a daily basis. I'm a practitioner. I'm not somebody that that uh, you know doesn't do the work. I, I'm in there every single day, and it's pretty incredible to uh, to do that. Yeah, I love that, man. And, and you know what? I think that unfortunately, and I've been trying to find the solution to this equation of can you create massive change in your life with mitigating the risk of hitting a moment that pivotally shifts you? And I, I think astoundingly, the answer is no. And so I'm, I'm really curious, you know, looking at going through this moment where you create change in your life. How did you decide to step into that? Because I, I think really quite often we hit these, you know, rock bottom after rock bottom or impactful moment after impactful moment. We sit here, we look at it from the outsider perspective and we go, I guess it's just life. But for whatever reason, there are certain people in the world where you say, you know what, actually, I'm going to do this other thing. What's that process? Like talk through what that process is like. I would say it was deep self-discovery, right? After her passing, just questioning everything about life, knowing it's so fragile in nature, right? That, that one moment you're here, the next moment you're, you're not. And probably the late, the last deep conversation I had with her was about legacy and her fear prior, cause she was going on hospice care at this point. So the end was, you know, out there in the not too distant future. She wanted to leave a legacy cause she had seven grandchildren and, and, so through that discussion, somehow the baton was passed to me and through my self-discovery, through really the pain and the recovery. And I don't know if you ever recover, it's always seared into your heart and soul and, and your memory. And at some point I chose to make the decision that I'm going to use this as fire, as that spark to, to ignite me and, and go out and help serve, lead others, because I know so many people out there, I call it, it's a world full of walking zombies, right? They're, they're going through the motions day in, day out. It's the same thing. They're telling themselves they're happy, but truly they're not in the, in the back of their mind. So self-discovery, just, just going through, Hey, how am I living my life on a daily basis? And, and what, what's my purpose? What's my mission? And when I came back and asked myself those questions, I didn't have an answer. I knew that was an issue. Yeah, that, that's powerful. And asking yourself those kind of questions take a, a tremendous amount of not only vulnerability, but you, I think you have to face some of your inadequacy in that. And you have to recognize what's really going on in your life. And I, I think you've, you've pointed to something really powerful in that looking at the perspective of people walking around as zombies. I, I hate to say that would be anything other than a truth, especially looking at the consumption of the way that we exist in the, the world we're in today. So and, and I don't want to be dismissive, right? Because I recognize and I understand that, you know, yes, it's COVID and, and yes, people have had traumatic experiences in their life. And yes, life is fucking hard, period. I don't want to be dismissive of that. But I, but I think that there's a place where you have to unabashedly look at your life and recognize this isn't what I want and do something about it. But how do you navigate that when the world is telling you you should be satisfied with good enough? It's a, it's a difficult decision to make to say, you know what, I'm going to stand up. This is not what I want to do personally, professionally. I am not going to follow that 
common path that society tells us to go, go on, it, it can be a very, very difficult venture. I'll tell you from personal experience, it can be incredibly fucking lonely when you say, nope, I'm, I'm doing these things that set me up for success. I'm not hanging out drinking till two in the morning. I'm not doing the, the, the crap that doesn't get you to where you need to, to be personally and professionally. And I feel like society has put those chains around us, right? Want us to be that square peg that fits into that round hole and, and have a job and, and have two and a half kids and a white picket fence and this, this belief that that's all you can be. And, and there's so much more potential, untapped potential in people, but it can be an incredibly lonely journey. So my only piece of advice there is find others that are going through that same journey, that, that same self-discovery bond with them, have mentors, have groups, because that that's where you can truly get that, that camaraderie, that jet fuel to, to allow you to break free. Yeah. And I, I think you do have to do it with other people. And, and anytime, like I think about this a lot, anytime I've ever tried to do something on my own, um, it, it's kind of like the old proverb. It's like, if you want to go far, you know, go with a group. If you want to go fast, go alone. And I'm always thinking about like, I want to go far. Like I want to go as far as humanly possible. But I, I think what the, the juxtaposition of that you is that you do have to actually start that process on your own. And and you talk about something that is near and dear to my heart. And that's the the power of your morning and your routines and your habits. And, you know, look, I'll be honest with you. I think that people at this point in the world that we live in, we talk about this idea about power of habits ad nauseum. Um, but there's something to it that I still find a tremendous amount of value in discussing it because I don't think people really fully understand what it means. So what I know about you, Jeff, that you bring to the table in a little bit different way is talking about the science of habits. So I would love for you to dive into that a little bit so we can create some context of like how you really start to navigate and create change in your life. Absolutely. I love, and I, I love habits. They, they are what creates our future success, right? 90 to 120 days down the road. So whatever you're doing now, just know that is going to pay dividends down the road, but science of habits. So one of the things I say is, is we've kind of been lied to as a society. Everybody's heard 21 days to make a habit, right? I'm raising my hand. If you're, you're listening to this 21 days is the bare minimum to actually create a habit. Neuroscience has proven it out. Now it can be anywhere from 21 to 67 days. And typically at 21 days, that might be the hardest point to get through. But when you've heard 21 days, you have that expectation that, Hey, if I get three weeks into the gym, come January 1st, third week in January, I've made it. But then all of a sudden you, you, you crumble. You're, you're not up. You're not set up for success when you don't know the science behind it, the statistics, the data, right? Because it could be three times longer than what you're prepared for and what your expectations are. It's why the third week of January is the most depressing week in the year because 80 to 85% of people fall off for any new year's resolution that they want to do. So that's, that's the first thing, 21 to 67 days to create a long-term sustainable habit. The other piece is starting small, right? So many people want to go so fast, so quick, right? And, and consistency is so much more than important than intensity right? Start out small, continue to build up. Don't go, if we're talking about the, the gym, don't go in and do an hour and a half, 90 minute workout when you haven't worked out in 10 years, what's going to happen. You're going to be so sore. You're not going to be able to get off the toilet or walk down the steps. Then you relate soreness to exercise. You make that connection. The mind's going to say, I, I don't want to go through that pain anymore. So, you know, one is having the science of habits. Two is starting small and building up rather than saying, I'm just going to go crazy to, to, you know, sprinting out of the gates. Consistency is more important than intensity. Yeah. And, and, and I faith, <laughs> I think we've all had that moment where like, I cannot sit down. I cannot stand that. Like I went to our, we, I have had that moment many times. Maybe I'm a, a sucker for punishment. You know, I, I think about this often. It's, it's looking at life through this scope of trying to create the pathway to what you want next. And you always hear people talking about, I mean, you got the, the miracle morning, you have these habit books, you have all these things about the morning routine and the power of it. I've talked about it multiple times on this show because I think that it's so important. I'm going to ask you a question. Maybe folks don't ask you. What are you talking about in the morning to yourself to set yourself up for success? 
there are a lot of I am statements, right? I am strong, I am driven, I am relentless, calling out to the universe with energy, with passion and excitement, because if you're doing it, hey, I'm strong, I'm that's not gonna inspire you, that's not gonna change your state. So all positive self-talk and my mission that I'm, I'm going for personally and professionally, uncomfortable goals, I'm, I'm speaking those out. The number one thing also, I'll, I'll flip that around, what I'm not doing, is I'm not checking my phone, I'm not checking emails, I'm not checking test me text messages, no distractions for that first 30 to 40 minutes of your day. If you get away from the world, stack all these quick wins that you can get when you start your morning, you, you are so much more equipped to be able to take on the day than you've ever been. And, and so many times, I love sports, I coach both my sons in, in basketball, right? When you're playing defense in basketball, what? Your hips are bent, your knees are bent, your quads start burning pretty quickly. That's how so many people start their day. On the defensive, throwing themselves in the shower, checking their phone, checking social media, reading a text message. No, it's, it's your time, and that's your time to prepare for success in the day. So that's so so vitally important. When, when people say, as a counter to that, Jeff, I don't have time, how do you address that? I, I love that. And I think it was Arnold said that, you know, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger said, you know, if you need sleep, uh, get six hours, just sleep faster. Right. And I always, I always chuckled at that one, but we all have the same 24 hours. So I always love to say, Hey, give me a snapshot of what your, your day looks like. And I, I remember back when I, I still owned my gym, a woman came in and said the same thing. I just don't have time in the morning to exercise. And I said, okay, tell, tell me what time you get up. Well, my alarm goes off at 6.30. And I said, okay. And I, I get, get ready for work at 7.30. I said, oh, that's that's fantastic. So what, what happens from 6.30 to 7.30? Well, I hit the snooze button five five times. And I said, okay, there's, there's your workout time. So everybody has the ability and has the time to put it in place. You're just not prioritizing what you want out of life. And that snooze button, social media, whatever it might be, is more important than your success. And, and that's something that you need to face. You need to look in the mirror at yourself and say, should I be doing this or should I be setting myself up for success and, and chasing my dreams? When when you're in this position though, so look, I'm gonna say this, easier said than done, right? And you're in this position where you're looking at your life and, and let's say for context, you have kids or you're working three jobs or you're, you're barely making ends meet and there's something about hitting that snooze, right? Cause that's easy, that's the easy one, right? You go, there's something about hitting that snooze where it just feels like I could have a little bit more control over my day, right? Yep. what's the, how do you bridge the gap? This is where I want to go with this, Jeff. How do you bridge the gap between this moment of looking at life, of taking control over it to create what it is that you want. And then that place where you just feel like, what's the point? Yeah. I mean, that, that is a big struggle for, for a lot of folks. One, when you hit the snooze button, that is not quality sleep, right? You are just delaying the inevitable. And, and what I like to say is you're basically snoozing on any dream, any goal, maybe even that you, you mentioned parents, you're, you're snoozing on your children's success because you're setting an example for them. So you're not getting quality sleep. And I would remove that button from your phone. I, I learned this about a year and a half ago, and it was very interesting to learn. I have an iPhone. Do you know you can go into the settings and actually remove the snooze button from your viewpoint. So you have one option, stop the alarm and get up. Otherwise that snooze button is the largest button in the middle of your phone. It's designed to have you hit the snooze button and snooze on your dreams and all those things you want. So like that, that's, it, it, it was crazy to me when I found that up. I never knew it had an iPhone for how many years that you can actually remove the button and it just made such, such total sense. So. Do those simple things, are they easy? No, no stretch of the imagination, right? Life is hard. You get into those habits, those rituals. It's it's like you're on this never ending treadmill of life and it, it takes a lot to say, hey, I gotta hit the stop button and I gotta do something different. But if you want different results in your life, I truly, truly believe the foundation where you start is that last 30 minutes of the day and what's that first 30 minutes look like for you. Yeah, that, that's super powerful. I didn't know about the snooze button. That's really interesting to me. And my first thought was like, why would they set us up for failure like that? Right. And so 
you, I have a rule. My phone is nowhere within reaching distance of me. I like everyone. I use my phone for an alarm. I don't even know a single person who has a real alarm clock anymore. I don't even know how they stay in business, to be honest. But I take <laughs> I take my phone. It's in the other room. It's 35 feet away from me. It is loud. I have to get up and go turn it off. There is no snooze button. I will say this. If I wake up and I'm like, fucking exhausted. I listen to my body. I do go back to sleep. That's very, very, very rare, however. But at the end of the day, you're right. I mean, you're setting, you're snoozing on your dreams. It's powerful. Like that, that's sitting with me. One of the things I want to dive into that, that you've mentioned a couple of times is the bookend of your evening and why that last 30 minutes is so important. People often talk about the morning routine at depth, obviously, as we are. Um, but now you're, you're, you're diving into different territory. Let's talk about in depth that evening routine and why that is additionally so important to success in your day. I feel like it's the missing link that so many people overlook. There are so many people out there that struggle with quality sleep, getting to bed, actually falling to sleep. They'll go to sleep at, let's say, 10 o'clock. They toss and turn. They're on their phone. They're doing things that don't set them up for a quality night's sleep. And then they wonder why. When they wake up, they're exhausted, stressed, and, and felt like they haven't slept at all. So sleep is so incredibly powerful, right? It heals our body. It heals our minds. So preparing yourself for a good night's sleep is, hey, I am going to get a good night's sleep. I am preparing for it. For example, for me, I put on blue light blockers or go take out my contacts and my glasses actually have blue light blockers in them. So I'm not getting any of that light from outside sources. It starts the production of melatonin. It starts that shutdown process. Typically, I'm reading before bed, so I'm not looking at a screen. I'm not being overly stimulated by it. And it allows me to prepare for a good night's sleep. So what happens? I fall asleep very, very quickly. What, much to my wife's dismay when we'll be having a conversation sometimes and I'll be out in like six seconds. She's like, how did you fall asleep when I was actually talking to you? You know, preparing for a good night's sleep as well as feeding your mind with something positive, something amazing you did, right? So many times we think about, oh crap, what the hell did I not do? Or I didn't get this done. We beat ourselves up, right? We're the only species on the planet that continues to beat ourselves over and over for the things we didn't do. But celebrating a success, marinating on that, thinking about it, and then visualizing your success in the next day, the mind actually works through it as you're sleeping. So imagine how powerful you end your day thinking about something amazing you did. And then what's the amazing thing you're going to tackle tomorrow? Your mind is going to be set up for that success and it's going to be open to what you're going to accomplish. Yeah, I, I love that. And I spend my I spend my evening as I'm like falling asleep, like laying in bed, focused on things that feel so unbelievably unattainable that when I wake up in the morning, like I'm even dreaming about it because it feels so impossible, right? Because I, I try to preface like, we understand that the brain can't really dictate reality from fiction and from dreams. And, and I've always thought about this. Like if I dream about doing this really crazy thing and I can convince my brain that it's possible, then maybe it is possible. And I'll, I'll tell you this, Jeff, I've done things that are almost impossible because I went to bed dreaming about them and the stuff that I'm working on in the future is even greater than that. So I'm super excited to see what happens with those things. Let me ask you this though, where, where people are in this position of looking at their life from the scope of lack, of not abundance, of not gratitude, of not having the things that they want. It's really easy. Like I've been there. I, I think you've been there. We can all admit that. Right. And, and I don't ever want to stand on high and look at people and go, well, just do this because I don't think that's how life works. But what I do think is that there is always space to find some sort of gratitude in your day, find some sort of accomplishment in your day. But for the people who will say, I didn't accomplish anything. I just did what I had to do. And, and it's they're very nonchalant about their own abilities. What tool, if any, can you give them to try to tap into something incredible that they've done in their day? So a couple, couple things. One is starting that process of being grateful for something. And, and if you can't find anything, asking someone close to you, because many times people can see things that you can't right? So that might trigger that thought of, yes, I should be grateful for, for two wonderful sons, right? So if you can't get yourself started, ask somebody close to you and they'll probably be able to give you some ideas. The second piece is start that practice of writing it down, get it down, write it on paper, either in the morning, at night, 
you know, write it down. And then that will start to open your mind up to things that you're grateful for. And then the third piece I would recommend is getting out and going for a walk in nature, right? Getting out there. There's so much power to being out in nature. I remember it was a couple months ago going for a walk around the neighborhood and I was, I was walking and I don't know what was going on in my world in that day, but I just saw cars and driveways. And I thought, gosh, how, how grateful should all of us be in this neighborhood that we have a place, you know, a roof over our head. We have cars in our driveways. I mean, there are so many more people less fortunate. So why am I even thinking whatever I was thinking on that day? So, you know, th those would be the, the three strategies I'd give to start someone down that path to getting much more into a grateful mindset and getting into that mindset. It's just like building a habit, right? You need to practice it over and over again. It's that, that repeating of what you're doing and then it becomes second nature. And then all of a sudden you see more things that you're grateful for. Yeah, that's really powerful. And and I think also, you, you know, you, you touched on like writing it down, look at it, stare at it. And I, I do this with my goals too. Every, I, I talk about this all the time on the podcast and in coaching. And it's one of the first thing I teach my clients. I'm like, you got to write some stuff down. You got to look at this. And and I want to transition here a little bit and talk about something that, that I think is going to be beneficial, especially for the Unbroken Nation audience. And that's this idea about turning your pain into purpose. I know that's a really big part of what it is that you're trying to do in the world and with your clients. Can you talk about that a little bit in depth and, and what that means? Yeah, absolutely. And we all face some varying degrees of, of pain in our life, right? Obviously the, the passing of, of my mom, it could be childhood, you know, trials and tribulations. I, I know Michael, you, you went through a lot as well. So we shield away from pain and we want to push it away as much as possible. It compels us to move, right? The two most powerful things to, to make us move are pain and pleasure. I would argue that pain is a lot more motivating, inspiring. It, it will definitely push you. And if you've had an experience like that, we like to put it away. And I have the example of my mom passing and I redid my office where I'm recording this podcast at. And I noticed one day that when I redid my office, the two pictures I had of her weren't there anymore. I said, son of a gun, I'm not keeping that pain close enough to me to be able to compel me, inspire me, motivate me. So I brought two pictures back up where I can see them right now as we're speaking on this podcast. October, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, right? My son plays football. I'm now wearing a pink wristband. I said, son of a gun, I'm going to be the guy with the pink wristband now until I pass. Because why? That reminds me of my mother. It's on my arm every single day. And it keeps that pain close to me. Third thing I did, put her name and a bunch of sayings up above my office doors. So literally I can see it as we're speaking. I come in, I tap the name, almost like a sports team going out of the tunnel onto the football field and it energizes me. It gets me in the state. So I don't want you to dwell on it. I want you to use it to inspire you. So bring it close, whatever it might be. It could be a wristband, could be a picture, could be a saying that, that your you know, late parent said or something you heard growing up or, or something of that nature. Keep it close and let it push you every single day. Yeah, I, I love that. That's actually super powerful. And I, I think we often get lost in this idea that we have to run from the past, that we have to stuff it down, that we have to take it away. And and look, there, I, I will say this as a caveat to that, Jeff, which I think is really important. Like you got to do some healing work around that. Right. And I, I think you I can see you shaking your head for those listening. Talk to me about that. Right. Because I, I think that there's a space in between that we don't discuss a lot. How did you get to that point? place where you're able to take that pain, especially with your, your mother's passing and not let it be this thing that's deterring you from your dreams, but instead pushing you forward because you've done work around it. Yeah. It's amazing. You bring that up and I get a little emotional about it, right? Because it's, it's tapping into that, that other side of, of the pain. And, and when you're fresh, especially the, the loss of somebody close to you, right? The death of somebody close to you, you're not ready to keep that pain close to you. You're going to have days where it pops up and, and you just start crying for no reason. Right. And, and you got goosebumps because you're thinking about the other person and, and you've got to go through that process. I will say over time it gets better and then it morphs, it transforms into, Hey, I want to carry on their memory and I want to carry on their legacy. And, and that's why I'm keeping the pain close to me because 
I'm remembering the good times, not those final days prior to to the the passing of someone. So uh, I, I will say right when when it starts, you're not ready to to do it. It's going to be a process. I mean, it's almost eight years that I've gone through it. I feel like finally, hey, with these reminders that I've got going on, it's it's pushing me every single day. And and so it could be it could take that long, right? So so don't have any expectations on yourself. Just know when you're ready. And maybe it's a, a time where like, wait a second, where's a picture? Where's something? Bring it back close to you. And then you might be be ready to use that pain to really push you. Yeah, I love that. And and so much of that is true because, you know, you got to take the time. You have to have the space. You know, there, there are people that say like grieving this process takes, you know, two years, three years sometimes. And so if that is the direction, give yourself the space and the ability to go, you know, what, I am grieving right now. I'm hurt. I'm sad. I'm, you know, grief is about, you know, going through loss. Sadness is about losing something and, and it's okay. And unfortunately, as much as we wish it weren't true, it is a part of the human experience. You know, as, as we look at life and you think about that, you know, talk about legacy, Jeff, I'm curious, like, what is the legacy you want to leave? What is the impact that you want to create in the world? Legacy is such a big, big word, right? And, and I would say, I've got a mission to impact 1 million lives, right? Through the power of the morning fire routine, my speaking, my podcast, my book, all those pieces. And we live in a tremendous, tremendous time in the history of the world where we can document our journey. We can, we can have it saved. So that, that's just so that inspires me on a daily basis to go out and, and serve and touch and help, help others that might be going through the pain, haven't reached the pain yet or want guidance. So that gets me up on a daily basis. I would say the other piece is leading my sons to give them the tools, the strategies, the habits that I never had going up. Lots of people don't talk about. It's never taught in schools. It's not talked about in family circles, really. Hey, what's your morning routine? That's not like stimulating conversation over, over, uh, over dinner, but it's the foundation. So being able to lead them I meditate with with each of them before they go to school each day. And I was I was on a podcast recently, and the the gentleman said, "Imagine how far ahead they're going to be when they're your age." And I said, "Oh my gosh, they're going to have thirty five years of meditating on me by the time they get to, to forty six, where I'm at." So, you know, impacting one million people and leading my my sons is is incredibly uh, incredibly powerful mission. Where does the power of creating an ethos live in that conversation for you? Ethos to me is the the environment you're in, right? I, I bring energy, passion, excitement, enthusiasm. I do it with my kids. You've got to have mantras. You've got to have this mission because missions are powerful. I, I, I would say I, recently I've changed all my goals to actually the word mission because if you think about a mission, that that's inspired goal. Eh, goal that's not very that's not very stimulating, inspiring. But a mission, right? I'm I'm a I'm a warrior. I'm going out on a mission and this is what I'm going to execute on. Man, that's that's incredibly, incredibly powerful. But the ethos, right? The rise, fight, love, repeat. That's that's what my book is is called. That's the mantra, the morning fire. It's rising like a phoenix, reborn each day, new opportunities, new possibilities. You're fighting for your physical fitness, mental fitness, nutritional fitness. You're loving yourself most importantly, and then you can love all those around you. And then you're repeating it, repetition over and over again. So rise, fight, love, repeat. I've got it on a wristband around my hand. That's the ethos. That's the mantra, right? My Kings of Sparta mastermind for men. It's never give up, never retreat, never surrender. That's what we live and operate by on a daily basis. You want different results? Get some of those things that inspire you. Write it down. Put it up where you can see it. Live by those, those, uh, those powerful sayings, those powerful mantras. And then you're going to be, you're going to be inspired. And, and listen, Michael, you, you know, this, we all battle demons in some capacity. We are all unique human beings, but we all face the same thing. So how can you set up yourself for success? We talked about habits. We talked about the morning routine. We're talking about ethos. Listen, these are strategies I keep in place every day because otherwise I'd be lazy sitting on the couch, binge watching Netflix. Right. And, and that's just the reality that, that we all face.
Yeah. And, and I think that it's so difficult when you first start this process. And so I, I, I always think about this idea about patience, right? You, you move through this a little bit day by day by day, right? Habits, routines, do it a little bit here, one step forward, one step forward. Think about this. I, I shared this with one of my clients the other day and they were like mind blown by this. If you make one change in your life every single day, well, if you do that for a year, that's 365 changes that you've made. And so I know people are hearing this like, okay, cool. Habits, ethos, this, that. It's a lot of different things. Look, you can't 180 your life. I've never met anyone who did it successfully. I just don't think it's possible. It is a process. It is a going from step A to step B to C all the way down the line until you get to where you want to go. And I think these kind of tools and and I'm I may be wrong, Jeff, but I think that these kind of tools, these are actually skills. You have to use these, adapt these, learn these, and they have to become a skill that you use in your life. Would you agree with that? I I definitely would, and I'll I'll piggyback on your getting better one day for for a full year. I mean, even one percent, right? The one percent rule. If you get one percent better every single day for an entire year, you will be thirty seven times better. Than when you started so you would look back and be like who is that individual so that's just like one percent that's a hundred reps of of push-ups you're doing 101 tomorrow do a little bit more so it's in incredibly powerful when you just over time compounding uh that compounding interest yeah I, I i totally believe in that and it's and it is a process so give yourself some grace but i always say ask yourself this question are you taking care of yourself or are you taking it easy on yourself because these are not the same thing jeff my friend thank you so much for being here before i ask you my last question can you tell everyone where they can find you absolutely so they can go out to the morningfire.com if they want to grab any type of, of coaching service I have. If they want to grab my book, Rise, Fight, Love, Repeat, Ignite Your Morning Fire, that's the foundation. They can go out to out, out to Amazon to uh, to find it. My podcast, Morning Fire for Entrepreneurs, is out on all major podcast providers. And then I'm out on all major social channels as well. Awesome. Thank you for being here, my friend. My last question for you is, what does it mean to you to be unbroken? It just means getting up every single day off the mat, regardless of what hits you the day prior. You have a new opportunity, right? There's darkness at night. The dawn is the light that is shining in and just getting up, having that, having that tenacity, having that relentlessness, being unbroken to get up every single day. You will be successful eventually. It might not happen next week, a month, a year, 10 years. You continue to get up. Eventually, you will, you will get what you want. I love it, man. I could not agree more. Well said, Jeff, my friend. Thank you so much for being here. Unbroken Nation, thank you for listening. Please like, subscribe, comment, share, tell a friend. And until next time, my friends, be unbroken. I'll see you.